Hello there, it's Ned Milburn, guitar builder and repairman in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Today on the bench I have a Fender made in Indonesia acoustic guitar bass. So it's a bass and uh, in general the build quality is decent but um, the fretwork was not fantastic. Many of the frets, almost all of them from the fingerboard extension onwards, uh, many of them were lifting at one or both ends. There was a few that were lifting around here at one end or the other. I pulled the frets and in order to keep this uh, repair um, from getting too expensive for my client, um, I tried to reuse the frets and I did reuse the frets that are here. I noticed that the tang of the fret, again the tang, the fret anatomy, from the end of the fret it looks like a mushroom and the top round portion is called the crown and the stem portion is called the tang. The tang of the frets were bent at each end so where they cut the fret they actually bent the tang and this is a bound fingerboard so you have to trim the tang of the fret in a couple millimeters so that uh, there's so that the fret can seat in there because otherwise the binding it will hit the binding you'll have to cut a slot in the binding otherwise so whichever they probably used a set of pliers tang cutting pliers which I don't use because they quite often leave that sort of issue where you bend the tang anyway these frets were not seated well I straightened out the tangs I re-radiused each fret individually hammered them back in they are shellacked, then glued in, and so I have then leveled them slightly, and now I'm at the phase where we call it uh, polishing the frets. And here I have what's called flexible abrasives. They're sponge sandpaper is another way we can call it. 180 grit, 220 grit. This one says 220 grit, but it's been so used that it's actually more like a thousand grit and I'm going to use the heavier grit first and then we go slowly but firmly um, in between each fret to try and get the edge of the fret and we're going to round off the area that we recrowned is the top portion I call it the shoulder of the fret and so we're going to smooth out that shoulder of the fret and the little skinny line that I left on top of each fret that gets blended in and the whole fret crown from this end of the fret, the fret crown gets perfectly rounded. So I go with the 180 grit first and I make sure I go the whole fingerboard you need to be extra careful to push in between the frets as the fret distance gets less and less further up the fingerboard. And usually you can see evidence on the fingerboard from the dust from the frets, the sanding dust from the frets. So just make sure you don't work one area way too much and then the other area just a little tiny bit. You gotta work all the areas consistently. So whatever your pattern is or system is for that, you could go here and then here and then here, or you can go along one edge, then back the middle, then back down the other edge. Whichever way you do it, it doesn't really matter as long as you keep it clear in your mind that you need to do it consistently on all areas of the frets, on all areas of the fingerboards, or of the fingerboard. Sorry. And I'm also looking at the reflection on the fret surfaces and by looking at the reflection that will tell me a lot about how I'm doing with this operation. 
and it's coming along quite well here now. I just want to make sure I push in between each of the frets up here on the end of the fingerboard where the frets are becoming narrower. On a guitar it's more difficult to do that because uh, the frets are even narrower together, closer together, because of the shorter scale. The bass is a longer scale. So what I do sometimes, I'll take a pencil and I have a few pencils that are actually cut so they don't have a tip on it, they don't have an eraser. I will wrap the flexible abrasive in the pencil and then you can you can even hear it, right? So that sandpaper is definitely getting on the edge of each fret. So that's the 180 grit. Then I'm going to move to the fresh 220 grit. And I should see I'm instructing and I'm forgetting I want to do the edges of the frets, the ends of the frets. And I'm being very careful, hopefully you can see that on the angle on the camera. I'm being careful not to do the edge of the binding. I'm just getting the edge of the fret like this. Then when you're done, you can rub your hand across there, you could rub a cloth across there, your clothes, and it's not going to catch, if you've done it right, it's not going to catch on your fibers of your clothing, nor is it going to cut your fingers from an edge of, or an end of the fret that's poking out and is sharp. So the fret ends, we want to make them look attractive, but we want to make them uh, safe and effective. Right? We don't want to bevel the fret ends in too, too much because if you do that, you're actually narrowing or you're shortening the length of the fret across the fingerboard. You're shortening the actual playing portion of the fret. So we just make the bevel. I usually make it about 50 or 55 degrees. I don't usually go quite as much as 45 degrees, but it depends what type of uh, fingerboard you have. Because, for example, a classical guitar, uh, the, thing, the, the strings are usually spaced further in from the edge of the fingerboard than on a steel string guitar or on an electric guitar. Some guitars, you need to even go taller than 55 degrees or 50 degrees because uh, if the string spacing at the nut and the, the neck itself is so narrow, the string spacing is wide, if the strings are hugging the edge of the fingerboard, then you don't want to bevel that bevel in much at all. So at times like that, I might even go 60, 65 degrees. And I don't measure these angles myself. I don't take an angle measuring device. Um, so these are just, you know, estimates for angles. Sorry for kicking the camera. And now I'm going to my 220, and it's a fresh 220. So that's good. Smooth this out a little bit more. And I can see these frets are starting to shine up really nicely. And I'm going to take a fresh portion of that 220 and I'm going to go on top of the fret edges. There's one side and here's going to be the other side. Now an interesting thing about doing any sort of sanding work Depending how you use the sandpaper, whether it's flexible, abrasive, or not, I just scratched this up a bit more because of the fresh portion, and I was going slower on this portion. So, even though I went over this, you saw me go over it with the 220, I'm going to use that portion of 220 that I used already. Go over here a little bit more. And smooth those areas near the fret ends that I went slowly on and I added some scratches that I could see. Usually this is easier for me to 
do the far side of the fingerboard. If you see holding the grip is very comfortable, I can use three fingers or even four on it, but usually three holding thumb and pinky like this. To do it this way it's really difficult and awkward. To do it with the thumb it doesn't work as well. So usually I take the instrument and I flip it around so that I'm always working the opposite side of the fret ends. That's something you can keep in mind, but for this instructional video uh, I'm not doing that just for time expedience. Now here is my well-used 220. You can see there's a few pits in the sandpaper. That won't affect its operation, but it's, as I say, it's more like a thousand grid or something like that. And I can feel the heat. Another thing that I find is heat from the friction. The heat actually seems to help it polish up really nicely. I find that with my French polishing as well. When I do my final polish to get the real uh, super mirror shine, I like to develop a bit of heat where I'm rubbing the pad on the guitar for French polish. Similar here, I feel the heat and I find it polishes up to a nicer, shinier finish. A little bit of noise vacuum. Okay, now the fingerboard is dirty. It's got a lot of uh, metal dust in there, as well as it's got some fingerboard dust in there, some wood dust. So I take a line of lemon oil, that's Dunlop 65, I believe, and I'll take a cotton ball, make sure you use cotton balls and not absorbent puffs, which are usually made of acrylic, and they do not absorb the same way as real cotton does. So when I first do this, I make sure I don't go too fast or too vigorous because I'll just splash that amount of uh, lemon oil all around. I don't want to do that. So once I get it spread, then I can go a bit deeper and more vigorously. You can see the color coming out of that. I'm going to add a little bit more. So what I like to try and do, if you think of it this way, you're using the liquid in the pores and you're flushing, if there's any dust, which there will be, dust in the pores, you're flushing it out. And then the nice thing about the cotton ball is the cotton ball readily absorbs that dust that you're flushing out from the fingerboard. So again, you see that? There's the uh, color from the metal and wood dust. And I flipped the cotton ball to a cleaner portion of it. Now it's not so clean anymore, but it's, it's all soaking in and soaking through, so I'll use that once more. There's still some liquid lemon oil in the cotton ball itself now, which means any of that liquid has gray in it. Throw that one out into the circular file. And this is just the edge of another cotton ball that was in my cotton ball bin. It's getting kind of small. But I'm going to wipe with this and you'll see there's a little bit of gray left that I lifted off. But there we go, there we have it. Now, I get to do the reveal, and again I use a uh, box board. Cereal boxes are great because you can cut them to size. Once they're past their prime, then you can throw them out. Environmentally friendly and very, very effective. Just remember to be careful with tape, even if you're using painter's tape like myself. You want to be careful with tape if you have uh, an older instrument because 
sometimes the finish gets very uh, delicate and it can chip off very easily. So there's the base. I got to do a little bit of work on the bridge and the saddle. Um, I've got to shim the nut and then recut the nut slots slightly. So there we go. That's uh, showing you how to finish up a fret job.